I brought this little bell from Switzerland that I got at a flea market because Switzerland is known for like these famous bells. Donna Glass just got back to PEI after a month long trip to Spain. It's only one of many countries she's traveled to in the last 30 years that she's fallen in love with. She counts herself as someone who could never get enough of traveling, but she knows not everyone is like that. Best friend that I travel with, um, she lives in Germany, and I met her in Mexico, like, oh my gosh, in 1990, however many years that is, like 20, nearly 30 years. Um, and she used to take three months off her job every year just to travel. So the year I met her, she had just done a month in California, she was doing a month in Mexico, and then she was going to Jamaica for a month. So traveling for her, just like me, is the reason for living. Anyway, she met her husband, or boyfriend, and then became her husband, got married, and he told her, and he had a bike sh bicycle shop, and they met because he was fixing her bike, and he told her he wanted to travel the world, but he was going to do it on his bicycle. So he went off, and he bicycled from Germany to Switzerland, and then he sat in a cabin in the mountains, and he said, I've seen enough, and he went home. Her father was a British immigrant, while her mother was from Prince Edward Island. Every two years, her family would pack up their car and make the two-day trip to PEI. She was 13 when she first traveled across seas. And that was a big trip, right? Like driving for two days. Um, so we traveled that way. And then I think when I was 13 or 14, I went to England with my uncle. I don't know. I think it slowly grew. I don't think it was ever a, when I grew up, I'm going to travel. Like, I don't. I think it just happened. Now, at 59, she has traveled to 40 countries. The way I travel has changed a lot from the first time I went to Acapulco and stayed at a resort. And I think I love the way it... So now I've traveled to do work away, which is basically it's where you go and do a bit of work per day for room and board, right? Those experiences have changed travel because then you're actually living with locals. You're learning about their lives you're helping them make their living um, and it's more a lot more educational than just recreational yeah so I think if anything my travels gone from like I don't go away to do that one week in the resort and swim and all day and drink all night and giggle and meet people from Saskatchewan sorry but that's what some people do right they um, like at, recently on Facebook, I was looking at some of these pictures who's down in Cuba and they'll, they'll say, this is a Cuban waitress and this is the couple we met from Thunder Bay. And, but they're not really showing, oh, or they'll say, this is Cuba and they'll show the towel shaped like a dolphin on their bed. But I'm thinking, no, none of that's Cuba. That's a resort. I think that there could be a planet out there called planet all-inclusive because I think when people go to Dominican, Cuba, Jamaica and they stay at these all-inclusives and never leave, they learn very little about the country. If you really want to get to know these places, you have to leave the resort. Her first vacation at a resort was in Mexico when she was 16 years old. She returned again and again to the resorts throughout her 20s. And after going to Mexico, Throughout my 20s, probably at least 10 times, maybe 11 times, with friends and staying in these resorts, um, I did leave my job when I was 30 years old, and I moved to Mexico <coughs> to do volunteer work. And I was going to live there for six months. I ended up living there for eight. But um, a friend of mine said, oh my God, this is crazy. Why are you going there? And I remember saying to her, because I want to leave the resort. Donna already has her next journey planned. She'll be traveling to Dublin in May. Beth Atkinson, Holland College Journalism.